Jesus. How did you? Rose? Shh. Alistair. It's okay. I'm here now. I didn't think you would. <coughs> of course I did. What did you expect? I've always cared for you. An eye for you. There's just so much left unsaid after. After what happened with Lilith. There were two loves in your life. Neither of them were us. Magic and knowledge. I'm sorry I could not give you the time you deserved. I never claimed to be a perfect man. I did love you, and Lilith. But you know what I was when you married me. Perhaps I'm being cruel. Perhaps I'm deluding myself. It was who you were that first attracted me to you. I do have fond memories also. my time. <sighs> I do not believe it will be the end of me, though. It troubled me to see how Lilith's death affected you with the alcohol. I didn't know how to deal with it. Neither did I. Anyway, I've bought what you want. What do you want me to record? I am recording my life story in a series of texts. But there's still so much to cover. I fear People will only remember the fiend that I allowed them to see and not the man that I really am. I've left many accounts of my magical teachings, but without the context of my life, how can they be truly understood? Can you help me with this? I've lost my pen. Well, it was lucky I thought to bring her one then, wasn't it? You've got all the time in the world. Where did it start? I guess it began in Hampshire. I'd already gained an interest in magic. And my first sect was old George Picking Hill in the New Forest.
You never mentioned this before. Well, that is because I was not there for long. I was unconventional in my ideas even then, without any magical experience to back it up. There were some incidents, and safe to say, things did not work out. But the seeds have been sown, my interest appeared. Was that just before when we met? Before we joined the sect? I was still intent in my magical studies, but this was not my primary concern. I also had a keenness for climbing and chess, and I went on to study at university, dabbling in philosophy and English literature. An interesting move. Perhaps a foolhardy one, however. I am so sick of your arrogance. It's people like you who leave society in the sorry state of decay that it is. Society is in the sorry state it is because it repeats cycles. We change subjectivity to new subjectivity, but we never change the system. The whole world relies on rules and uh, ideas that are counterproductive to our true nature and our higher selves. There are simply too many blindly following the masses for many to notice or anyone to change this. Your philosophy does not change the fact that I am head of this organization, nor does excuse your rudeness. Once again, your bravado has cost you. Your piece is mine. Do you not see that in chess and in life, we must make sacrifices to achieve our ultimate game? I do not suffer fools gladly, and you should not be the captain of the chess team when you lose in so few moves. It was around this time that I went on a trip to Stockholm, and all I'd been starting to feel began to culminate in a spiritual awakening. Horses of good symbolise everything that has oppressed me. Perhaps... Perhaps I should take a different route. My housemaid became bothersome at this time as well, prone to fatigue and illness. Whatever is the matter with you? You cannot just lie here like a leech waiting as life passes you by. I'm sorry, Alistair, it's this chest infection. It's, it seems to drain the very life for me. Well, there's no. Go to the bloody doctors then. I'll render any charges. I had an interesting time back then. And from what I heard from you, a colourful sex life. I think from around this time I came to realise that uh, the importance of sex in spirituality. Of course, I did not have the right tools to explore it in the right manner, so... It was essentially a lot of experimentation for little results. After university, that is when I met George Cecil Jones. He first introduced me to the sect. Do you still speak with Cecil? Cecil and I have remained friends to this day. I've spoken to him. All I needed to before I... So 
So tell me how you met on the set. I do remember, but better from your lips. Alistair. Hello, George. How have you been? Studying hard. As usual. So, how are things with you? Oh, matters can be tiresome in the sect. Many are passionate, but there's always politics. Does this mean we must like? Oh, no. Things are fine. All the necessary requirements are in place. You must learn to be more patient, Alistair. I'm not an impatient man, but life waits for no one. I see no purpose to delay so society's laziness can continue and its doctrines be obeyed unquestionably. I never doubted your determination or some of your logic. He's not been with us long, though. I hope your judgment is sound, Cecil. His aptitude for magic is sound, as is his resolve. I have done my own research on the man. I have worked too hard to get where I am to rely on others. He has potential to become a problem for us. Ambition is not rewarded quickly within these ranks. You managed to fit in. But he has a deep hunger, a narcissism, more than you had even. Well, Cecil, we shall see how this turns out. If things do not, let me know that it is you who shall front the blame. As in you, our trust was placed. Of course. I shall conduct the initiation myself. Stand. and to give yourselves to us and to our cause. I am. not take this lightly, Alistair. There are those that do not approve of your acceptance. Cecil and I are already taking a risk allowing you here. Your infamy precedes you. There are those that do not wish to make you an ally.
I also met Alan Bennett then, too. Another member, like Cecil. So, Alistair, are you ready to begin? I trust you're well rested. It helps when dealing with these drugs. The body must be able to handle them. I am indeed. Body's health is but an extension of the mind, is it not? Well, I'm most aware today. An answer for everything, Alistair. <laughs> I'm glad. However, be warned. This is advanced magic beyond your years and a powerful drug. I trust your abilities, but you must remain resolute. Be sure to calm your mind and embrace the feelings within your body. To resist will cause anxiety and will ruin the experience. Yes, but the purpose of introducing you to magic was to expand your experiences, Alistair, not to lead you down the path of black magic. Why do you insist on attempting these things? This is not a case of good and evil. White and black magic are two sides of the same coin. Besides, black magic is widely misunderstood. It is misunderstood, but many of the teachings are misleading. Some of the practices you speak of are inhuman. It, they can only lead to disharmony within your soul. It is these myths I seek to dispel, to find the true nature of both sides of magic. I do not wish to murder infants, no matter how powerful it's supposed to be. But where there was light, there is dark. So surely it's the same principle with magic. I used to think like this when I was starting my training. I attempted things I shouldn't. And perhaps that is why I'm always in poor health. I now seek harmony and enlightenment rather than the path of ritualistic magic. I do not doubt the importance of your teachings. I will learn all I can from you. I take great care when attempting my own rituals. I respect your pure intent, even if this is not something I could do myself. I guess that will have to do. Now, Alistair, I hope you realize the severity of what we are about to do. Once you begin a relationship with this drug, few can ever leave its embrace. And in the wrong measures, it can have grave consequences. It can achieve everything you say it can. And it sounds like an experience I could not legitimately refuse. <laughs> I always remember how arrogant you were back then. I always had a soft spot for Alan. Maybe it appeared that way. Maybe I was, even. I think I just knew even then that... whilst there were many skilled in magic, that within the sect I could never achieve what I wanted to. I had other plans filling my mind. Soon after, as I feared, they would not allow me to progress, and so I sought out their leader, Mathers. Samuel Mathers. Yes, you must be Alistair. Alistair Crowley, from your London sect. Yes, I received your letter. Follow me. Let me see. It would seem that you have a lot of controversy surrounding you, Alistair, and have made few friends within the Order. That is... Saying that, it appears 
that you are a very natural and accomplished magician. You've come all this way to speak to me, so go ahead. It is true, I have few friends, but many within the Order blindly follow doctrines and orders with no thought towards our own destiny. For many, there seems no place for advancement through skill, and jealousy and stigma run rife through the Second Order. I do not claim to know everything, but I do not suffer fools gladly, and I do not respect authority that has not been earned. Perhaps I can be of service to you, Alistair. I could do with a man of initiative instead of another sheep. But we must move fast. There is dissent in London, and I struggle to maintain order from overseas. And this leaves me little time for my magical studies and the progression of knowledge. It seems there are similar goals. Can you overrule the decision to not have me initiated? I can do better than that. I shall oversee the ceremony myself. But later, we have much to discuss first. It seems from this correspondence that you do not entirely agree with the practices of our order. I assure you, I shall not be offended, but I would appreciate hearing from you how you would improve matters to achieve even higher standards of excellence, which is something I continually strive for. I believe the joy of life consists in the exercise of one's energies, continual growth, constant change, and enjoyment of new experiences. To stop simply means to die. The eternal mistake of mankind is to set up an attainable ideal. And it is for this reason I believe the sect sometimes suffers, and where my opinions sometimes differ from those of higher order in the sect. The Abramelin you've been translating. I find this very interesting to progress in the order. It is, in my opinion, a very accomplished piece of writing in magical terms and should, when properly studied, transform the magical ceremonies. I have already attempted to incorporate some early ideals and practices into our sect, but the London Order resists change and all forms of magical ambition and challenge. My thoughts exactly. Knowledge is really confined to experience. The laws of nature are only those of our own minds and groupings of observed facts. It is, therefore, no argument against ceremonial magic to say that it is ludicrous to try raising a thunderstorm by beating a drum. It is not even fair to say you've tried the experiment, found it did not work, and perceived it to be impossible. Too many from your order seem to adhere to what is possible, and what has been done, and not what can be done. I have a lot to think on. Let us not run before we can crawl. If you would follow me to the chamber, we can begin. Soon after that, the order began to rebel and Mathers called upon me once more. Rebellion is rife in the sect. Insolent fools. How dare they rise up against me when I have given them so much? Perhaps a magical attack will lessen their resolve. There are far too many of them for that. Well, that just depends on how fast the attack we mount. No, they believe only in their own petty rules and politics. I shall disband the sect, but we must recover the texts first. As you wish. I believe in you, Alistair. Stop! How dare you bring your treachery here to this chamber? The blasphemy you brought has tainted this order for long enough. And now you steal from us. Your words have no power. I am under instructions of Mathers, and your petty scrobbling has no meaning. And your order was being dissolved. You are expelled from the order. 
We no longer follow madness, and you are both exiled. You will live to regret this day. What makes you think we are going to allow you to leave? I can only hazard a guess what you may know about our inner secrets. Alistair, what is the meaning of this? I instilled my trust in you and put my reputation on the line and this is how you repay me. And what is this? I have no quarry with you. And Cecil and I are still close. But can you not see what is happening here? Would you rather back a sheep or a wolf? I am ambitious in my pursuits, but not as ruthless as you are. I see how the order is heading. It's not my choice, but if it must happen, then I would at least try to lessen the damage. We cannot all become masters and shed away the knowledge we were handed in pursuit of seeking it our own way. Some must dedicate themselves to the Lord's commands. We forget. Without a teacher, there could be no student. I wish you could see what I was trying to achieve here. My goals are not selfish. Why do you still defend him after what he has done? You should not count yourself amongst our leaders if your judgment is so clearly flawed. You are a weak and petty woman. This is why I lead and you do not. It's people like you that cause our order to war amongst itself. People with no vision and only an obedience to guide them forward. Let him pass. You have no right. I have every right. I am still your superior and I say let him go. We are not murderers or villains here. I will not allow our order to be tainted by either of you today. Go. I will surpass you all. Your fear and stigma will only lead you to magical stagnation. You are but a gaggle akin to a pertinent child. And that was the end of my involvement in the set, which was a good thing in a manner of speaking. Why did you hate him so much? Hate is too strong a word. Perhaps contempt. I hated them for the same reason I hated religion when I was growing up. The order had no time or flexibility to further itself. Black magic was totally misunderstood, as, as is often the case. The whole system was just repeating itself each year, its stagnation increasing and the teachings becoming more irrelevant. Any innovation it once had is now lost in the annals of time. I began to really get serious with my climbing. Few realize the patience and persistence that is required when tackling these titans. There is so much to learn from the ancient world. I traveled the globe endlessly, searching for a piece of a puzzle always just out of reach. Physical hardships labored me endlessly as I sought to test the limits of my skills to breaking point, venturing on greater and more arduous treks, learning from the very elements of the earth and meeting the wisest holy men and scholars along the way, all the while adding to a bank of knowledge that I could never fill. The 
thousand cultures and a billion existences that have faded into dust and only it's stone and mortar that survives. I tap the deepest depths of my mind and soul for insights on the fruits of my travels. What is the purpose of life and the meaning of existence? Something I learned is that seeking this question is the wrong one and can never yield results. It is only by settling upon your own path and seeking answers from that quest that may give us purpose and knowledge. To search for a response from a universe so vast and infinite as our own is too much for our minds to comprehend. I braved all that the world could throw at me and dived in headfirst to the sea of experiences I yearned for. Never pausing for rest, a hunger overcame me and a determination unrivaled. I realized that any limit in our world is one we have created within the constructs of our mind. The universe can be whatever we project it to be. To make your own fate is to live in glory. So I continued my travels, learning what I could from the very deepest parts of the world to its primal peaks and plateaus. It was abroad that I met Alan Bennett again and began my interest in Buddhism. I am glad you have traveled to see me. Having studied Buddhism, I really am convinced of its power and of its benefits to spirituality. More at peace than ever I have been within the sect. I cannot fault it. I'm truly astounded at the clarity of mind and peace it can bring. However, I must still practice the rituals I know and progress through. This is a slow route to enlightenment, albeit a rewarding one. Mm. I do not have time for such things. I am sorry to hear that. I hope you can learn some more insights before you leave. Perhaps it will change the route you go down. I do see some very impressive results when I look at your work, though. Perhaps you can master things that I cannot. Perhaps. Let us not enter this discussion again. We shall enjoy a peace and tranquility while it's available to us both. Yes. You're still bitter about that mountain trek. It's not long after that you met me. But what of Alan? He never did say why you two fell out. We were such close friends. I suppose there's no harm in telling you now. Alan focused entirely on white magic. And later Buddhism. He would believe I was only interested in black magic and sacrifices. I do not discredit his abilities. He was a kind friend, but white magic and the enlightenment he sought was just a small part of what the universe has to offer. It was inevitable. I have lost so many dear friends on this journey I have taken. I learned a vital magical word, Abrahadabra, with him though. Something I put down to his presence. If only your intentions and your actions were one of the same, you might have led an easier life. But then you wouldn't be the accomplished man you are today. Then we went to Egypt. 
My dreams were haunted even before that day in the pyramid. And your pregnancy with Lilith began. It was then that the messenger I was of Or Ra Krat, Horus, into me. Heed me. Heed me. Rose, stop playing games. I'm trying to study something important. I am mighty. I have no time for misdirection. I am that of plague and of pestilence. I am everything and nothing. Heed me. I will listen to what you have to say. Your knowledge I will adhere to. We do not have to die to become a divine and spiritual being. There are rights to be achieved that can reunite you with your all and greater self. Heed my wisdom. Whether you are in heaven or earth, north, south, east or west, my presence is the only one within you. The purest sight I have. I will not die twice. My moment is within you. All forms are where I exist. I am the one that is not known. Amongst others, it is I who is the unveiled. Only hail the one from the moon, only him. I am within you, but I have hidden myself. To become one with yourself, you must become one with each other also. I've been reaching a similar conclusion, but it's refreshing to hear it from someone as old as yourself. But what about life itself? How can I obtain enlightenment? You can do as others do and be a pawn in their fruitless game, or you can create your own fate. There is not time in excellence for mercy. To achieve what you wish, you must put your will above all. The weak will become slaves to the strong and the wise. The supreme moral law is, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Mankind now begins a new aeon. You must live by your true will. You are the prophet we have chosen. This is the book of law that thou will convey. I am grateful for the book of law you read, though to this day it perplexes me. I never grasped its meaning fully. That museum you took me to with the, the marking proved most useful. The marking of the beast. 666. On that artifact. It still scares me to this day. After that I was a sceptic no more. A powerful experience indeed. When I returned it was to Boliskine in Scotland. It was there I began my attempts to summon the Holy Guardian Angel and achieve spiritual completion. I have to remember, but I can't. It was a prolonged experience, but through dedication, I eventually succeeded in attaining the knowledge I sought. It was also around this time that I found myself feeling under psychic attack. Mathers and all his jealousy and the rivalry we once had, no longer kept in check by the sect, was assaulting me psychically. I did retaliate, of course. Did he really attack you? Why did you two fall out? I believe he did. It cannot be explained 
easily without experiencing, but uh, the things sent could only be from the from his skills. Mathis and I were both accomplished magicians. And the rivalry was there from the beginning. It was only held on due to my commitment within the sect. When that broke off, there was nothing to hold us from our dislike of each other. Go forth. If anyone else had told me that story, I'd be hard pushed to believe them. But as it's you, I feel I have to give you the benefit of the doubt. He did not bother me again. Are you not forgetting something important? The birth of our beautiful daughter, Lilith. How could I forget? I still blame myself for her death. Don't you think I did? Why do you think I drank so much? I have tried to make peace with it. We had our paths to go down and so did Lilith. Staying together would have been more of a disaster. What happened cannot be changed. We can only honor her memory. Yes. What was it you were off doing at that time anyway? I blotted a lot of it from my memory. I led another mountain expedition. Insubordination and going their own way only led to several deaths there. By no means a successful trip. It was the most treacherous mountain in the world at that time. They said I was reckless, but I warned them at the time. Following that, I'd met a woman who had been part of the sect and invoked I was once more. He had instructed me to return to Egypt and await instructions. But I wanted to retry the mountain. I went to America for funds. I still wonder what I could have learned had I gone back. We also had our second child, Lola. Did I always dictate you? Further works then. I learned some knowledge from that ceremony and from that and the texts of Abra Melin. Some was automatic writing and a ritual, and the rest was research. Then came the divorce. Yes. It's starting to come back to me. There's something missing, but... What? The divorce? No, no. After that, I... I then met Victor Neuberg. What happened in that desert would... change me forever.
did happen there? You're still being vague. My very soul seemed to be invaded. Felt like it was annihilated. Left me with spiritual and mental scars. Please, now. I cannot discuss this anymore. Okay. Okay. I then met up with Sessa once again and decided to progress with my work once more. Alistair, I cannot convey my disgust. The same fear was this group of men that caused my initial hate of religion. It was inevitable. Magical talent and leadership are never governed. It was a flawed system of hierarchy. They've squandered their knowledge and potential. They didn't. It was the actions of a few that caused this mess. We should create our own religion. Well, that's just limits. You and I. I never doubted your ability. I should be honored to join you in this venture. Around this time, Another sect believed I had stolen their material. Having realized I had come to their knowledge on my own, I was made a highest member within them, eventually to become a leader of the English-speaking part. It must have been a wonderful experience to have outsiders independently reach the same conclusions as your own, with so few to understand what you were actually trying to achieve. Indeed. It was refreshing. I also wrote two of my produced works here. The Hymn to Pan and Gnostic Mass. I then traveled to America. And it was here that I began to Begin my studies into sex magic. I made many attempts with varying results. One such person I worked with said it required a sacrifice, which I was not keen on. The papers always remarked you were a Satanist and murderer. Accepting that they might work in magic and saying I personally implore the use of sacrifice are two different things, Rose. I saw the pictures of the cliffs. Do as thou wilt in great big capital red letters. I did not think you were still interested in me. I doubled. Having learned a lot from some great minds in America, I, I moved to Sicily and set up the Abbey of the Lema. It was here I began to try to create a magical child. I believe everything's been done that needs to be done. Have you cleansed body and mind? Of course, my dear. I've been waiting a long time to try this. I would not waste such an opportunity. Very good. But the correct invocations must be made. We must remain vigilant to the ceremony and not get carried away with the process. I have concerns. My interpretation of the text may not be accurate. I... Do you not understand why you doubt yourself? Have you not been successful in every venture you put your hand to? I have never met such an accomplished man or magician. Would I be with you otherwise? Have I not always been at your side when you need me? How is it you're so full of admiration and trust? Your confidence inspires mine. Let us begin, my ape of thoth. Here we are in the sacred grove. Protect us from evil. Protect us from all evil. There was a figure in the clouds, movement in the darkness. There was an unknown presence in the sacred grove. Geb, Sekhmet, Osiris, Isis. 
He darply, for child born of magic. I am nine, I am eighty-one, I am the moon, embrace me. Hear our plea, send us this moon child. So? So, what? So did it work, the moon child? Sadly, I had many followers and one went astray. I found the diary of Shamwe, another scarlet woman there, and I believe she was practicing foul magic that led me to the miscarriage Leia suffered. Where is your beloved Leia then tonight? Always such bitterness in your words. She's out. You have me all to yourself. Is that what you want to hear? You know, many of my concubines are merely number. I think you forget the privilege I give you above others. I do not have your pet name branded by searing metal across my chest, though. Like Leia, do I? But am I not as pleasant as she is to the touch? So this is what you often mistake. Sex magic is not merely about sex. In fact, the magic is of equal importance. I do enjoy you. But if I allow myself indulgent without any spiritual gain, I'll get nowhere in my studies. Surely if we're quick enough, though, you can get back to your other studies. You are starting to test my patience. Perhaps your resolve's not quite as strong after all. Suit yourself. woman. You really are quite mad. Nanette, come back here now. What is it now? What is the meaning of this? I hope this is one of your twisted jokes or games. If what you've written in here is true, so help you. So help me what? I have done everything it says. And I would say I've been quite successful. Get out! And never return. What a hideous woman. Black magic can often be misconstrued or used by the wicked in the wrong manner entirely to the intended nature. You love Leah a lot. You mention her often. She could never replace you. But she was so involved with her magic. It was that that I fell in love with. Okay. So then the government kicked you out of Sicily. What then? You, uh, probably don't remember, but when I had returned, your drinking had gotten so bad, I had to send you to get help. Brett, do you think you've had enough? What? So now you care all of a sudden? I've always cared. Really? Where were you when she was ill? Where were you when I needed you? You? you. What kind of man I was before you married me? I was away. I, I couldn't have guessed. She, I didn't know. No. Because your learning always came before us, didn't it? If you were so concerned about us, you would have been contactable. Off, and we didn't see you for months! I'm here now, aren't I? I cannot undo what has already happened. You need to be strong. You have a good mind to talk about strength. You and your nightmares. About the desert and what you and Victor got up Never to! Never speak of that. This is why I cannot be with you. You only concern yourself with trivial matters. There is far greater things out there to tap into. I know you do not believe it, but I'm truly sorry for what happened. 
I also miss Lilith. Do not speak her name as if it meant something to you! I cannot do this anymore. I cannot stay married to you, and you need help. You've left me no choice. I don't blame you for sending me away. Whoever's fault it was, the drinking had got out of hand. I'm at peace now. Sometimes when I close my eyes, I see her. I'm glad. I, I would blame myself if I thought it would help. It is not so. I blotted out. We've got sidetracked. Sorry, carry on. The ceremonies I conducted were not all innocent in their nature. I did have a wicked side. There is a time and a place for morals, but in magic, sometimes it demands more. I drew the line at human sacrifice, though, however tempted to see the results. That poisonous woman, Nina, that typified everything deceitful in the world. And that lawyer showed me how prude and naive the era was. It's like I said in my book, no word of a lie. The wickedest man alive. I am not speaking some untold truth here. I believe this is common knowledge amongst the public, is it not? You are one of the most morally questionable opportunists I've come across. 
You dare to reflect on me with your history of promiscuous behaviour, drunken exploits and general lack of decency. I may not be perfect, but I am by no means the bastion of evil that this man is. Black magic and all manner of deviancy. I tell the court nothing but the truth regarding your character, and there is no personal gain to be made from your slander. You only seek to further your own career through the use of infamy and sensationalism. I assure you, you will live to regret this day and your selfish ends will come back to plague you. You see, he even threatens me. Who knows what black things he will send for me when we leave today. Once again you must read. I will do nothing of the sort and you are well beneath my contempt and time. I am merely pointing out that the universe has a way of dealing with such infantile behaviour and slander. Earlier, I read to the jury some verse from a book entitled Clouds Without Water. Isn't that filth? You read it as if it was magnificent poetry. I congratulate you. Is the meaning of this filth? In my opinion, it is no importance in this matter. You are reading this sonnet out of context, like you do everything. The ramblings of a lesser mind. You have been well known for years as the author of all these things that I've been putting to you? No, I wish I had a far wider reputation. I should like to be hailed as the greatest living poet ever. Truth will out. That is your view, is it? Yes. Mr Crowley denied that he had contempt for the ordinary views and standards of ordinary citizens. He had contempt for some of them. In 1910, he published The Winged Beetle, a volume of poems. These poems are not erotic. Let us move on to the next issue. Mr Crowley agreed that during the war he visited the United States, and in 1915 he contributed to a Chicago magazine an article in which he referred adversely to England, and declared the Kaiser the genius of his people, and an angel from God sent to save the fatherland from savage foes. Did you write that against your own country? I did, and I'm proud of it. And was that used as uh, German propaganda in America? Yes, I wanted to overbalance the sanity of German propaganda, which has been very well done by turning it into absolute nonsense. That is your explanation now. After the Allied cause has succeeded? Lots of people knew it at the time. Mr. Crowley admitted that he assumed the designations of Beast 666 and the Master Therion. 666 is the number of the sun, and you may call me Little Sunshine. This is not a laughing matter. You have written one or two novels? Yes, and about eight short stories. Is it not fair to say that practically all your works are erotic in tendency and grossly indecent in expression? It would be totally untrue to say anything of the kind. I published a collection of 52 hymns to be blessed by the Virgin Mary that were highly praised in the Catholic press. Yet another unreasoned slander to my name. I do not hate Christianity as you so paint the picture. I simply disagree with the dogma and lack of aggression of many of its followers and its insistence to all by fear rather than knowledge. You didn't win, did you? No, but I had my say. But you cannot sway the minds of but a herd of sheep. It was futile, but it was not all a disappointing period like it might seem. How so? Well, it was around this time that I started to become friends with a gifted psychic writer and magician, Sybil Leek. Around this time, she was a great diversion from my mind. It was often philosophy that I spoke with her. It allowed me an outlet from the stress of my magic studies. She was also a useful consult with rituals and planning due to her vast knowledge. Sybil? Alistair? 
Do as thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Shall we? By all means. So, how are the studies coming along? The mere acts of studying can often prove more troublesome than not. I've come to realise the names and laws we come up with in morality and science are just that. This is true. But in order to master magic, you must understand it on some level. Very much so. The eternal question that vexes us is why though? In our search for these answers, we tried to bring together a series of abstract observations, which seem to form the basis of standardised living and existence. I cannot explain why I can see future events, or why I find magic easier than many to practice. I merely aim to progress. Without these scientific and social frameworks, though for the many, there would be no context for you to deviate. Surely. But it so happens that this earth around us is ultimately irrational. There is not and cannot be any reason for this causal connection of things. But if only because our use of the word reason already implies the idea of causal connection. But even if we avoid this fundamental difficulty, Hume said that causal connection was not merely unprovable, but unthinkable. And in shallower waters still, one cannot explain a true reason why water flows downhill or sugar tastes sweet in the mouth. Attempts to explain these matters always progress to learn lucidity. And a further analysis retires a remote stronghold where everything is irrational and unthinkable. If you cut off a man's head, he no longer lives. Why does this occur? Because it kills him. That really is the whole truth. Learned excursions on the topic of body and mind only beg the question, it does not explain why the heart is needed for us to live, only to say it is an organ most vital. But exactly that is what we do. I often find myself wondering the why of life, though. Why I have these gifts that others do not? Why some men achieve excellence and others lead unfruitful lives? I can only conclude that which you've already said, that we make our own fate, and we must not question the universe, but make it work for us. You're a fair mind to share these things with Sybil. A fair mind? Come, share with me some of your poetry. How many billion galaxies there are, I know not. But such a part of our existence they are, seem and so. Though it does, to wander the planes of existence a thousandfold, one could still never truly understand their truths. Our souls, part of the magic few understand. The name science I hear you, so many usher. The incorrect so-called truths of our obsessions. How naive we are to think such things. When we are one, the all and nothing. Most poignant, if a little indulgent. But do they not hold truth? Always. I've been expecting you, Alistair. But I did not send news of my visit. Then again, I suppose I do not need to in your case. Call it one of the perks of my trade. Have a seat, please. Another book, Sybil? I suppose to teach us time to learn. Putting a collection of words down on paper can often concrete its essence better in your own mind. Or highlight the flaws. As a magician cannot learn without reminding himself of the true origins of the art. So, what brings you here today, Alistair? Would it be the news I've read about you in the papers? What, that I'm a Satanist? <sighs> I let the ignorant indulge in such theories. I do not have the time or inclination to correct them otherwise. The very idea that evil doesn't exist 
only makes it seem all the more menacing and vague. I see your view, Alistair. But being this headstrong and flamboyant about such things could damage the wicker circles and our reputations. I do appear so, but I have put thought to this. Those that believe such things have guilty consciousness of themselves and will believe what they will. Those that have the intelligence to will not. This merely throws a topic of discussion to those of the lesser or the greater minds to be aware of. There is logic behind your words, but I also fear that it may come back to get you in later years. I have already seen the beginnings of such visions. I have also had similar bouts with scientists seeking to discredit astrology. It is not merely a whim of perception, but a huge number of independent factors that lead to a perfect horoscope. But realise this, they do not. So a similar situation harasses you then? I do trust your foresight, but the effort required to even attempt to sway the minds of these parasitic media types and their regimented following they have is far beyond the time I have. I am a busy man after all. That you are. So what's the news in your world, Sybil? I've seen a terrible event to come. A war on a scale you cannot possibly imagine. A Frenchman who will be instrumental in fighting against this foe. I am also finishing off a book on herbs and mysticism. I feel medicine is becoming too distant from the origins and realise that a simple formula can also work very well. Well, I hope I'm not alive to witness such events. Society exclaims at my evil, but at its own guilty conscience and willingness to turn a blind eye to war and atrocities, which is where it really lies. In regards to the book, you are providing a valuable service. To me, a book is a message from God sent to mankind, or if not, should never be published at all. I wish I'd had the chance to meet her. I think we'd have become friends. She sounds very interesting. Indeed. I would recommend you read some of her books. <laughs> I don't think I'll need to do that now, will I? Do you think it was worth it? How I live my life? Only you can say that. You made many enemies, but you also imparted a great deal of wisdom and knowledge. There were those that you touched, but you're not perfect, Alistair, and genius cannot be in every aspect of us. Thank you. That means a lot. Now, I must finish telling you. Sorry, go on. I think people thought that I kept them waiting as a sign of my power. It can actually take up to three days to clear the mind of the business that the working world fills it with. It would have been useless to see people in that state. One of the last people I met with was Joe Gardiner. He had a great mind. He was ambitious like I, but there was something inherently likable about the man, despite his despicable appearance. Gerald. Alistair, thanks for coming. How can I help you, Gerald? As you know, I've travelled the world, encountered all sorts of traditions, customs, various tribes. I wanted to set up my own Wiccan tradition, based on what I've learned and um, on my studies with the traditional New Forest group, and of course on your writings too. Why not, though? Foresight. Wicca is dying. It's too inaccessible for the people. I'm not going to set up a sect tomorrow. 
These things take time to prepare. I have so much more that I need to study. So much more to write, too. I see. Many of my studies do not suit the masses, oh, Gerald. Only you and I, perhaps a select few, could grasp what it is I've been attempting. I hope you do not plan to betray some of the closest secrets I've shared with you. <laughs> the Guardian Angel and the other matters we discussed. Let me assure you, Alistair, I will keep such experiments for my own amusement and a topic for our conversations. No, I just want to form a better more reformed template. Should we not try to do this in magic as we wouldn't sight? But of course. Good. It's settled then. I'm writing a book. It'll be unlike any other book ever written. It'll bring paganism and the Wiccan tradition, the popularity of this, right to the fore again. If it is as you say, I wish you every success. Ask me anything you want. Of course. So did you help him write the Book of Shadows? That is something you can figure out. He knew many things already. Our discussions were nothing more than discussions. Perhaps some things we conversed about made it into his book of shadows. Perhaps they did not. I then agreed to meet a reporter. He reaffirmed my thoughts on the media. Alistair? Can I call you Alistair? You can call me what you want if it humors you. Good to meet you at last. You're a hard man to track down. What is you want to know? I'm a busy man. I do not intend to waste time with small talk. Okay, so you filed for bankruptcy following the court case that backfired on you. How are you coping going from riches to rags? Who said I was in rags? Do I appear that way to you? Well, I thought that... I lost my fortune around that time, yes. Does not mean I live in squalor now. Well, how do you survive? A man who likes women? Fine brandy and a penchant for heroin? These are all expensive habits. I can choose how little or much I indulge in those things. Besides, I've many followers and benefactors. You mean you scrounge off people who you deceive and continue your decadent lifestyle at the expense of I others? I do nothing of the sort. I provide a valuable service to them which is greatly useful to their existence. Besides, it is hypocritical of you to question how I live my life when you feed off lies and hearsay like a parasite. What have you have brought to the world apart from fear and negativity? You scrounge to the very soul of society. What about love and the will? I can see the rumors are true. You are an unpleasant and snide man. Well, you have misinterpreted that in quite an impressive fashion. I am neither of those things to people who know me. Rumours are nonsense, and you are an idiot. And an ignorant one at that. Anyway, that is enough on the Book of Shadows and the media. But... I... <coughs> <coughs> sorry for the pain that it caused. It was only then I knew how you felt. It was you. 
You're not making any... Rose. Rose. I have to go. It is fitting, but in life, it is also thus. Come, let's go. Come with me. Alistair, you have been repeatedly instructed not to enter that room. It is forbidden. There is no time for frivolity. You will adhere to the solemn word of the Lord. You do not decide who your friend is. Neither do you disobey me. Their family are all degenerates and lowlifes. I will not see you even speak to liberal sinners again. Acting up in class again, are we? Go to your room. Tonight, you will be feeling the heavy hand of the Lord. Thank you. 